Hello, hello, everybody. This is King Show here. And before I begin, well, never mind. I was gonna say something, but that would give it away. I'll be very fast. Mm. Yeah. Let us begin. When we last left off, Deku and everyone else had just started been running. Everyone is running for 10. Well, let's say. They've been running for about 30 minutes, and they're actually asking Deku where they're going. Momo would point out that this would be easier, she could make a pair of skates for everyone, and Deku would just say that he's not really sure how her cork will work down here. In fact, the only reason why he let her come along is because of the fact that her cork can create things. And she may actually learn a lot of different useful skills, along with knowing where some of these metals are. So, she might even learn a little bit of magic. But he knows that she essentially likes learning. Also, everyone else here will be helping him. The place they are going is essentially called... Combustus Monosis. That is your guys' clue. There is a Star Wars city or planet that I essentially sprinkled the name in here in. Combos Monosis. M U S T I O N I S. Now. I put the first part of a city in Star Wars into this. I also put in the burnt. Now, hang on. Anyways, Ida is saying that that just sounds very greedy and very weird. Deku would say that it's not anything like that. It's just everyone here is essentially a target. And he just, it's going to be a bit more difficult, but the training will pay off. Trust me. Now, as for you, Ida, stay in first gear. As Ida would just click down at a second. Which somewhat pisses him off. Now, they would arrive, and everyone's looking around, and they're a bit weirded out. Because they've been running for about two hours. Deku would stop saying that they're here, and people would look around and see a burned city. They would ask what this place is, and Deku would just give them the name, which kind of confused them. One of them is saying that that sounds a bit... And Deku would just say he doesn't really know how it is or what it's from, but the best he can gather is... This place was doomed. Now... As he would immediately walk over into a tall building, which is a library. He would say that he spent the last 10 years here actually learning different things. Learning the language, learning the techniques, and actually just scoping things out from here. Until he learned all he could, and actually just tried going over the information again. But that got boring, so he left. Now then. This is whenever Deku would say, May and Momo could have the main hold here, but they are going somewhere else. As Deku immediately just walks into the library, going, essentially coming over to a giant bookshelf, pulling out a book, and essentially opening it, flipping to a certain page, and actually presses something in the book. He then closes it, puts it back in, and then does so for seven or eight more books. Which is whenever the bookshelf would immediately start opening up. This confuses everyone as they would see a long corridor with a ladder. 
they would all go down, and Deku would explain that this was essentially another outpost. He didn't find this right away, but, well, the way he found it was a bit more violent. But this place will essentially be their base. Now, Kaminari, come with me. May, also come along. As he would take them to essentially the power room, where the generators are. He would tell Kaminari that he needs to hold on to these two pieces and actually charge the electricity throughout his fingers. He would explain that he can only go up to 1 million volts at a time, and Deku would say he doesn't need 1 million. He just needs him to power the generator. Now, as soon as he starts trying this, he says that he can't do it, and Deku would say just to give it some time, as he would leave him and May to actually work on the generators. Now then, this is when Rishi, well, May would actually start talking to Kalnari, saying that she needs him to essentially find her some tools. As uh, he, she can't really see. So, he needs to try and keep the power on long enough to actually allow her to find some things. He would say that he can't do this, and this is whenever Deku would walk back in, saying, here, just try doing this. I told Bakugo to do this for his electricity, so just as he would give the explanation, and he would try doing so. He has trouble at first, and he actually does shock his brain one or two times. Which make him go a bit stupid, but he's still there. So Deku would just tell him to try and keep it below his shoulders. Which is whenever he would do so actually able to light up the entire area and actually turn on the lights. As soon as this happens, Deku would actually walk over to the control panel, putting in a password and actually walking into a room with a computer, which has two USBs in it. Deku would immediately sit down and start going over some things, and he would actually unlock a couple doors. Now, he then tells everyone, this part of their training is going to be a bit more difficult, as he just unlocked the lower five levels. On the lowest level, there are some imps. They are not very hard to deal with, but for you guys, they may be a challenge. Now, they have been locked down here for a long time. So, I suggest you guys all come up with, strat with a strategy. I will be monitoring you from the elevator. So if you guys do get overpowered, I will actually be there to save you. I will not let any of you die. Now, Momo, as he would immediately bring her over and actually show her a book based on different magics, saying that she needs to study this. Now then. Wow. This is when Rabakugo actually just asks, what is he supposed to do then? Deku would say that he can only go up to 40%, correct? Baku would say yeah, but he's not really sure, as Deku would immediately just say, Well, guess what? You're coming with me. As he immediately just brings everyone down to lower levels, opening up the elevator, and everything would just go to hell. The imps would immediately try and pile over into the elevator, essentially tearing everyone apart. But Deku would just be there to throw his power around, actually killing all the imps in front of him. Actually stating to everyone that, essentially, these things want you all dead, and there's no way out of here. So what are you guys going to do? Ibarra is hesitant to use our quirk, but Baku just immediately blows them away. And... Jiro is actually somewhat hesitant to actually try, but... She listens as she uses sh sound waves to do so. Ida tries running around, essentially bringing them all to one room, trying to lock them in there, but Deku says that that's not going to work. Ida's not really sure, as one of them actually stabs into his arm with a knife. Actually making Ida scream, as he actually does throw it up against the wall. He's not sure what to do here, and Deku would say, essentially he can remove that knife and go to the med bay, but this is not going to be easy. You can't be a hero here and have humanity at the same time, Ida. 
You wanted to come here, so you're having to do the same thing we do. Now, I am essentially showing you guys how to survive on your own down here. If any of you ever get captured. Now, Ibarra, I need you to actually listen to me. Use your quirk. She's still hesitant, and Deku would just say that that's okay, but if she's not going to use her quirk, at least to use physical combat, like I've been training you for for the last five months. Well, I've been training you for the, for the last couple months. And this is whenever she would say fine, as she actually does try and fight with some of the imps. She's having a lot of trouble, which is whenever she would actually have to use her quirk. She just restrains them and actually keeps them held together. But Deku would tell her that she needs to kill them. Which she does not want to do. Now, everyone is essentially doing their own things. And this is whenever Deku would say that that's okay. But they're just going to stay there then. As he would actually bring everyone back up to the elevator. Bringing Ida to the actual med bay, patching him up, and actually getting the knife out of his arm. Saying that he should keep it as a reminder. Because it's pretty much going to be like this for a little while. Now, please give me a minute. Now then, Ida actually asked Deku why he's going to even try and keep that thing. And Deku would just say that this thing is made of him. At a main team. It's essentially a very good metal. If not the best he's ever seen. Ida just says what the heck is an team, And Deku would just basically say. The best he can try and even come close to is. What? That knife he used to have back on earth. That thing was not even anywhere close to adamantine. It was basically like trying to compare steel to tungsten. You would ask if that's even good, and maybe would actually somewhat hear this, because let's believe, let's be honest, she could hear anything. Running in saying, "Is that good?" That's actually very great. She would examine the blade some more, and she would actually take it to Momo, as she would say that she was able to fix at least one of the generators. So as long as they don't use too many lights, they can keep it on. As Kaminari would just walk in somewhat. With a thumbs up saying that he'll be fine, but he just needs a minute. As he would fall over, actually laying on the ground. Now, after this, Deku would actually be talking, and he would gather everyone around the table. Oh, Bakugo, Yuraka, and a lot of different people. He is actually telling them that, listen, this place has six floors in it. And I've only discovered two or three of them. The other three we need to actually look at. This place was considered to be a, not only a creation area, as well as a weapons factory, but they should have stockpiled metal. So, we might need to look around for different debris and actually search this place. We will spend the first year here doing so. As Momo and May actually learn different techniques, along with me teaching forging. Now, I will have to forge us some different gear so that we can actually explore the area. So, while doing so, I need you guys to actually do this. As he would say, Bakugo, your explosions, you just need to, to use your other quirk. Move Rubble and Yuraka, you go with him. Juro, you actually come with me. Ibarra, come on too, May and hmm, May and Momo, <sighs> come on, you can stay there, and Ida, you go along with with Bakugo and Ochaka. Now, as this is going on, Deku is essentially getting their help, as he thinks he may have found. Essentially, different types of metal. He would say that he has found one different weapon, as he would show them the armory door. 
He would say that this is one place that he has never been able to break into, even now. As he would actually cock his arm back, throwing a punch at the door, actually barely creating a dent. Now then, this actually surprises May as she says that that's not no big deal. So what's going on with that? As everyone else has a look of shock on their face, she would turn around and see this saying, Oh, so that's supposed to be a big deal. Um, okay. Anyways, Deku would say that essentially he may have a good idea for this. May can tinker around with the door controls, and Jiro just needs to keep vibrating the metal. Now, Jiro would actually plug her... I, don't, I believe she has to plug them into the ground. or in, No, she plugs them into herself, right? She would plug them into herself and actually start using a cork on them. As she begins just blasting sound waves at the door. As this is going on, he would actually take Ida over to another place. He would take Ida over to the firing range and actually say that this is essentially a very long track. So he just needs to run from one wall to the next over and over again. But he needs to stay in full gear. Now, this is whenever he would actually take Momo and May back up to the room, if not to the computer area where he was working at. As he would actually sit down and actually start going back at the computer. As soon as he does this, Deku is just looking through the computer more, and he's actually asking Momo and May different advice on it. As he says that he spent two years trying to decipher one, one measly piece of code that Ibarra was able to help him with. In fact, hacking into this is a lot harder than he even thought. And Ibarra would simply say that essentially if you... What happens if you were to plug all these in together? Deku would say he's not even sure that's possible, as May would quite simply say that essentially she can link all the computers into one giant screen, along with the dis different systems and hard drives they have. She would get to work on that, along with Deku actually moving some of the things, helping her. And this is whenever Deku would actually leave these two to that. Now, Deku actually walks into another room. This room is cold and made of metal. As Deku, he walks in, this room has no lights. He immediately goes to pull the lever, and it won't go down. So, he just... <laughs> oh, that was nasty. He just smashes his arm down, actually opening up all the chambers. This is whenever lava would actually start flooding through the walls, along with the forge burning bright again. Now, Deku would immediately say that, essentially, he made her, he told her that he was going to keep everyone here safe, and he's going to train them along with her. So, he made her, he's making her a promise. Along with, he's going to make her a piece of equipment first. So, Deku would immediately get to forging, and he would actually forge Ibarra a small weapon, saying that she knows how she doesn't like using them, so he made her this. As he holds up a promise rank. It will make more sense later, trust me. I have this a little bit more planned out. He holds it up and she's actually kind of confused, and he would say that this is his promise. He promises to keep everybody safe and everyone here alive. As he would actually show her one thing. Essentially all she needs to do is flick her little finger, and a little blade will pop up. He knows that she's not like she doesn't like weapons, but this is essentially it. The only weapon he may ever make for her. The rest will be armor. But that is your decision. 
as he would set out to create armor for everyone in class. Now, this is probably where I am leaving off, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And this was very, very hard to think about, along with the fact that it's now quiet. Jeez, it's quiet now. Okay. I woke up around two hours ago, and ever since people have been getting home, it's just been loud and screaming. My nephew's been running around with Nerf guns. It's not fun. Anyways, whoever can guess the city from Star Wars, or the planet from Star Wars, that I have essentially put um, Kabastus Munoz spin. The Burned is essentially in there. I'm not saying in what language, but whoever can guess what planet this is, they get to pick a what if to be on the list next. But I'm thinking about doing a drawing for villain. A separate drawing, actually. So basically, hey, I write down everything in the comments I've seen. I put those into a jar, and I shake up the jar, and try and pick up that one. So, I will be doing that for 800. So, please leave comments below telling me what you guys want the special to be, and I will write those all down and put them in a jar. Because I've been seeing a lot of DC and Marvel stuff. And it's actually pretty cool. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and have an amazing day. I hope you enjoyed.